In this video, you learn all about TRT and gyno. Welcome to this channel. I am Dr. Steven de Vos, the lifting dermatologist, and this is my partner Danny Bossa. If you want to learn more about the most cutting edge science based information in the world of hormone optimization, please like and subscribe. I also invite you to join my other YouTube channel, The Lifting Dermatologist. The link you can find in the description of this video. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel and a happy new year. This is the first video of the new year 2020. And again, with my YouTube partner, Danny Bossa, all the way in Canada. Welcome, Danny. Thanks, uh, Steven. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. So today we're talking about TRT and gyno. So that's a very common YouTube search term for TRT, uh, Danny. So um, what can you tell us more about that? Yep. Okay, so huge concern with everybody uh, and for, I mean, I guess it's pretty normal. It's a huge concern. I mean, no one wants to wake up with a pair of boobs. <laughs> so um, in the group, in our Facebook group and on the channel, you're going to see a lot of talk about not blocking estrogen, not blocking E2, the E2 is good. And the people that come in that, that argue about it are the ones that are saying, you know, if you don't, it's going to cause uh, you know, breast tissue growth. It's going to cause man boobs, gynecomastia, gyno, bitch tits, whatever term you want to give it. That's a huge concern about them, or they think that they're going to get, you know, uh, emotional or say, they cry at movies and water retention and bloat and all these other types of stuff. But the main concern is, is the guy. I've done a ton of these videos, guys, that you know, and um, the main, I guess, argument I get from guys is they see me that I have a little bit of it. And they say, well, Danny has some gyno. So obviously he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about because look at him. What a lot of you guys fail to understand, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, is I had that for probably 15 years. And it was a hell of a lot worse before TRT. And the interesting thing is when I had bloods done, uh, not only was my testosterone levels low, but my estrogen was at 12 PG, uh, peak grams per uh, milliliter. Very, very, very low A2. And I had it anyway. So it goes to show that estrogen is not necessarily the cause of gyno. You can get it for a number of reasons. If you're predisposed to it genetically, uh, you'll be obviously a lot more prone to get it. Um, I've mentioned in other videos, I've gotten it from trying different vitamin supplements, mineral supplements. I've gotten it from herbs. I've gotten it from eating things that contain soy, even those little edamame beans that you get at the uh, sushi restaurants. I had flare-ups on that. Uh, at one point, I even tried Proviron, which in Europe is used a lot to, to lower SHBG and essentially free up uh, free testosterone and also acts a bit as an anti-estrogen. And I got a flare up on that. I just tried it for like literally two weeks and it was like, you know, it was just it was flaring up right away. So again, before you guys want to just say like, oh, Danny, he's got it. Like it's, it's minor. Like if you look from the side, you'll see that there's like a little, little, little lump. It's really not the end of the world. And some search, it kind of shows more than others, especially here with these lights I got beaming on me. You see every little thing, but it's, it's pretty minor. Um, I'd love to actually to try to find some pics of me from 10 years ago and 15 years ago, and you'll see the difference. Like I had, like they were literally popping out. Uh, I've now got my testosterone levels way higher than they were before, obviously on TRT. Uh, my estrogen levels are much, much, much higher. They're probably at least 60 at this point. And the, whatever little bit of gyno I had has shrunk down tremendously. Uh, so this year, uh, one of my goals is going to be to try to, you know, put on some more muscle mass, uh, try to dish some body fat. Obviously, the more body fat you lose, if you do have a little bit of gyno, just getting leaner is going to help a lot. Um, I had started training towards the end of the year and I ended up hurting both arms and both shoulders from going too hard, too fast. Don't do that guys. Easing to work out slow and don't do the same mistake that I made. So I had to take time off. I ended up kind of shrinking and losing some mass, but I got to start that over now. Um, so yeah, if you are, are predisposed to it, any little thing can set this thing off. I know that I'm predisposed to it because, and you guys might have the same thing that happened to you. When I was a teen, I remember getting this ball of this little massive tissue under my left nipple. And it was like this hard ball. And I remember going to my mom and showing that I could literally with my fingers grab it and pull up. I was like super, super, super lean. I didn't have an ounce of fat on me. I just had this big ball of tissue. 
I was maybe 14, 15 years old. So obviously it was just due to the massive hormone fluctuations of, of you know, puberty and whatnot. But I remember having that then. And again, later on in life, any little thing that I did, it would just set it off and it just started to grow. I had it more on this side than this side. Uh, you can get it on one side and not necessarily on the other. You can get it on both, both places. Um, so, you know, first of all, if you, if you do get something like that, um, you can, the number of things you can try, try to get your body fat down lower because the more fat you have, the more it's going to show. Uh, I took a month off of training just to try to let my arms and my shoulders heal from my injury. And I put on some fat and just by putting on fat, it, it grew more. Uh, so I got to get that down. So that's one thing to try. The other thing is if you're on any type of protocol that you're getting a lot of fluctuations, like maybe you guys doing weekly injections or biweekly injections. And I know some of you guys are going to argue about, about this with me, but I've seen this in myself and I've seen this in a lot of other guys. I find that when I just keep the levels kind of stable throughout the week and I have less of those ups and downs, those flare ups don't happen. As soon as I move to twice weekly injections and I'm getting those up and downs, I start getting the flare ups again. Now, I, I'm obviously a, a, an exceptional case, perhaps. I'm extra sensitive to this stuff, but that's maybe one thing you can try. Um, don't worry about your estrogen levels at all. Again, my estrogen levels are way higher than they ever were, and this is now smaller than it's ever been in my life right now. Um, so that's not a concern. Um, now, if you do get it, there are, you know, there are a number of things you can try, you know, uh, pharmaceutical wise, you can try, first of all, I would not suggest taking an AI. An AI is called, uh, it's called an aromatase inhibitor. An aromatase inhibitor prevents the action of testosterone converting into estrogen. This is something you absolutely do not want to do under any circumstances. Uh, estrogen is a paracrine hormone, which means there are varying levels of it in different parts of the body. So you're gonna have some of it in your brain, you're gonna have some of the different muscle tissues. And when you're taking something that's going to block the conversion of testosterone to estrogen, you have no idea where you're going to be lowering it. I mean, yeah, you could be lowering it in your breast tissue, but you can also be lowering it in your brain or, or anywhere else. So that's, not, that's something you want to do. What you want to do is block any kind of hormonal stimulation, hormonal activity at the breast receptor site. So you can try something like uh, tamoxifen, also known as Novadex. Uh, you can Google different types of protocols. Often I've seen stuff like 40 milligrams a day for a little while and you bring it down to 20. Uh, some guys have had some success at getting it to shrink down a bit. And then once their hormonal profile is in a little bit better position from doing TRT, it tends to not come back. It tends to stay down or at least in something manageable and not something that, you know, not, not as big of a deal, if you will. Um, another drug that is considered even more potent from what I've been reading is a drug called raloxifen or raloxifene. Uh, you can Google that one as well. Um, I know I did see an article, um, actually it was from, uh, what's his name from uh, more plates, more dates who posted a protocol of, I believe it was 60 milligrams every day for 10 days. And then you drop it down to like half of that for as long as it takes for it to shrink down. So with these types of things, you can take it and it may shrink down a lot. Uh, it might disappear entirely. It may shrink down only a little. At one point, you'll just see that it just kind of stabilizes and that's where it is. And then it's up to you to decide like, hey, is this shrunk down enough? It's not really that much of an annoyance or is it still annoyance? Um, if you've only had it for a short amount of time, oftentimes these drugs will improve things, perhaps even eliminate them entirely. In cases like myself that I just had it for the longest amount of time, and this is way, you know, long before I knew about testosterone and TRT and all this kind of stuff, you know, I just said, oh, I'm going to live with these, you know, these lumps and this fat on my chest and whatever. If you've had it for a long time, these drugs might not really have much of an effect. Uh, so basically you got to think of it as if you've had nothing and you suddenly get this temporary swelling from something you're doing TRT wise or, like I said, vitamin, mineral, or something that didn't agree with you and it causing a flare up. If you throw in uh, tamoxifen, Novodex, or raloxifen, it could get it to shrink back down. But once that tissue has grown and it's been there for a while, now that tissue is there, it's physically there. And there's no drug in the world that's just gonna make tissue, tissue uh, vanish, if you will. At that point, it'll be up to you to decide, do you want to have surgery to have that mass removed entirely? 
Um, when done properly, uh, they, they cut open, they remove the tissue entirely, and when done properly, it won't return. Uh, I have seen cases where guys got it done and they didn't, the surgeon didn't do quite a good enough job and it did actually come back. So, you know, again, buyer beware. I've never really been at a point where I felt that I needed surgery. Um, like I said, it's really, you know, not that big of a deal. It tends to bug you guys <laughs> a lot more than it bugs me, to be honest. Uh, there were Reddit threads posted up all over the place over the holidays about, you know, Danny doesn't know what he's talking about because he's got guy in one. Don't worry, don't worry about estrogen uh, or testosterone or anything like that. Just have a, a decent protocol. If you are not genetically prone, you can pretty much do whatever the hell you want. You might not even get it at all. Um, obviously, if you're going to start falling into stuff like anabolic steroids, there are some steroids that are uh, very prone to giving you something like that, like uh, Dianabol, Dball. That's one that you really got to be concerned about. Um, but again, I would not suggest anybody ever try to block their estrogen under any circumstances. If you are getting that, you can try, like I said, tamoxifen or uh, reloxifen. Some guys, when starting um, TRT, they will get some kind of itchy nipples. They'll get nipple sensitivity and they start panicking, but they feel around with their fingers and they don't really feel a lump or anything like that going on. In cases like that, I'd say just wait it out. Just let your body kind of adjust and typically it'll go away. Um, so really what you want to do is just feel like, do you have any type of hard lump that's under the nipple? There are some guys that, that have what they believe is gyno, but it's really just fat on the chest. It's really just uh, a poor hormonal profile where they just pack a lot of fat on their chest. So they're lean everywhere. They got these really, really fatty chests and it kind of looks like boobs. Also, uh, it could be due to, uh, poor posture. Like I have the worst posture at all, like ever. Like you, if you look at me from the side, I always have my head kind of forward. I'm trying to work on it. But if you've got your head forward and your shoulders forward and you always kind of crouched forward, they're just going to hang and they're going to look like boobs. Okay. So poor posture, obviously, if you get much better posture and you're up straight, that's, that's going to fix it. But if you don't feel any type of really hard lump, any type of firm mass, if there's no place that you press and it feels sore or tender, it could very well just be fat. So just by watching your diet, exercising well, burning off that fat, yes, I know it's hard. I'm still trying to figure it out myself. But just by doing that, I've seen so many guys go from like full on boobs to like perfect looking chests uh, just from losing body fat. So again, you know, two types of gyno, there's the all fat ones. And then there's with the lump, uh, the fat is easy to get, you know, easier to take care of than the lump. Uh, two drugs you can look at. Um, don't worry about estrogen. Don't worry about testosterone. Uh, you know, if you're exercising and you're eating well and you've got your free tea optimized and you're feeling great, that's uh, already a, a huge step forward. So um, glad to see you guys all back. Um, we've got all kinds of really cool videos scheduled for January. Um, we've got... <laughs> Um, and we got a bunch of other stuff planned. We got uh, interviews with Jordan Grant and uh, Jeffrey next week or this, this coming weekend. So uh, stay tuned. Lots of cool things to come. I hope you guys had a great vacation. I hope you had a great New Year's. Um, and that's it.